Hello and welcome back to Planet Zoo. So tomorrow, October 18th, we've got a brand new pack to play with, Twilight. This is a scenery based pack, so not only is there five brand new animals, but there's also a whole bunch of new scenery to explore as well. Frontier kindly sent me a preview copy of the pack, so many many thanks for that. With this in mind, last week I set myself a challenge for launch day, build a castle. The new Twilight Pack scenery pieces, they're heavily focused on gothic architecture and there's a lot of stone pieces, columns and spires that are certainly there to help us create wonderful castles with. Basically this is my take on that. Time was always going to be a big factor in this build, so it is rather a compact zoo. Big focus of the zoo being a castle and all, it's on a hill. Everyone knows that castles are built on hills, it offers the best defence. I've got the big hill, one route in, every other route blocked by rocks. Being on a hill also gives great vantage points to see when trouble's ahead, so great views of the poor job I made of the tree placement out here. Tree placement isn't my strong point, neither is rock placement, thousands of rocks. We got there in the end. Entry point for the zoo is down here at ground level. This isn't something I've made myself. This is one of the many wonderful ready-made blueprints that comes with the Twilight Pack. You'll notice with this build, I've incorporated a lot of the ready-made blueprints into this. Most of the time I like to create my own stuff, but every so often they'll release a pack that has some incredible building blueprints included in the pack and it's worth incorporating into the build to show exactly what can be achieved with the set pieces. Not everyone that plays Planet Zoo has got the luxury of time, and I don't see there being a problem using the ready-made blueprints, especially when you can customise them to make them into your own build. It feels like that's what the pieces are actually there for. So yeah, not my own build and entrance this one. I've not modified this in any way, and I'll be honest, the entrance was somewhat of an afterthought on this build in the first place. Normally the entrance is a big focal point for me, but the, just the nature of a castle, you're likely to have an entrance at the start of the hill, uh, get your legs a workout making your way up there. The real architectural focus is the body of the castle itself. I did debate whether to add a spawn point within the castle itself, but then nobody would be using this path. And well, we can't have that. Nobody gets to skip leg day here. Talking of the path, I had a few problems building the path up. With the Twilight Pack, there's a new terrain tool, the ramp stamp. I initially started shaping the path upwards with the ramp stamp. That didn't last for long. My personal opinion of the stamp, it's a nice tool if you're creating an incline path that's straight. Where I started running into problems was the curved and windy nature of this path. The ramp stamp, it doesn't handle curves very well. I was getting many, many terrain too steep errors with the path placement itself. So I abandoned that idea and instead created the way up with an elevated path set at the lowest ramp incline. That essentially eliminates the terrain too steep error unless you're getting too close to the terrain itself. So I've got around the big gap that creates by putting the rocks right up close to the path. And I've also created this crenellated wall all around the building. This is something I've built myself. And it's made of all the new Twilight Pack pieces. It helps create some depth to the various levels of the castle. So let's make our way up the path and into the castle itself. Through the gates here, we've got our first habitat. And this is the striped skunk. Tiny little critters these are. I don't know why, but in my head, I was visualizing the skunks being somewhat the same size as the anteaters for some reason. Yeah, no, these guys are much smaller, more akin to the size of the badger in game. So that is the skunk habitat. The path then takes us by a Bernie's bake stand. And again, this is my own creation using the twilight build pieces. Across the way from the bake counter, there's a street fox coffee here using the same skin for the shop shell. Now, from here, we can go one of two ways. This way goes into the castle itself, or this one goes down to the lower tiers. Tell you what, let's save the castle and take a look at the lower tiers first. First tier down houses the raccoon habitat and a monorail station. The raccoons, I've set them up in this little cage display. Worth bearing in mind, I've built this in creative mode, obviously. So in a franchise or a challenge zoo without their happiness cheats enabled, they probably wouldn't be happy with this little space. 
but because I'm not taking any of that kind of stuff into consideration with this zoo, they're very happy raccoons here. Next to the raccoon habitat is the monorail station because of course I put a transport ride into a tiny zoo on the side of a mountain. The entrance to the monorail winds itself down from the top level. The amount of time it takes to get the entrance path working in such a small space is unbelievable. The design of the station itself, this is a twilight pack blueprint that I've modified to fit the station. The original was a large shop blueprint and I've tweaked that to stretch the length of the station. I've also tweaked a few bits and bobs here or there to make it conform to the workings of the station. Custom flooring here. This is a new tile piece with the pack and it's quite a small piece so it works well with making your own flooring. So the line, it follows the curve of the cliffside here uh, where you go past the raccoons, then over the winding path there and then under the tower then it's a big incline into the castle itself and yeah just for the fun of it you do do a loop de loop around the small tower there then we snake around the big towers and then all around the side and down through the underpass and that brings you back out to the start so yeah not essential but just a bit of fun all right so that's the monorail done where should we go next right so when you're done with the monorail, you're led down another winding path down here to the lowest level. And this is where I've put the red fox habitat. The red foxes, they're much like all the varieties of foxes in the game. They live in big packs. They don't need a huge amount of space. And I bet if I left them, they'd probably breed like nobody's business, um, like all the other fox varieties do. But yeah, I think if you're looking for something with new and unique behavior, it's it's not these foxes behave exactly like all the foxes do the habitat i've made for them here the hard shelter in here is a combination of two twilight pack blueprints that i've modified to create the one building here same with the seating behind the habitat there's a wooden gate blueprint and i've used that to create the shelter here by modifying it a little bit the bench i've used here is the new spooky one that we get with the twilight pack New path pieces like the benches, bins and the picnic tables are all themed like this and I've got a few in this build to show what they look like but my preference is to go with benches and stuff that are less themed. These are very specific to a Halloween build and obviously that's what the pack is about to end of the day isn't it? But I don't know sometimes I find myself getting a bit hung up about using stuff like that that's just specific for one purpose. That's just my personal preference though. I mean, I don't even decorate my house for Christmas. <laughs> so, bit of a Scrooge in that department, aren't I? Right, that's the lowest tier of the zoo done. Let's work our way back up top. Oh, as we go up, we go past the standalone tower here. My idea with the tower, that was gonna be a uh, habitat up here. And there would have been a high bridge that takes you from the main castle to this point. So a big, tall, skinny bridge that you sometimes see on castles like this. But then I had the idea for the monorail tunnelling underneath it. And that kind of messes with being able to get a habitat barrier down here. So in the end, it's just a nice focal point as you're riding the monorail. That's pretty much everything for the outside. So work our way back up to the main castle. The entrance for this is back around by the skunk habitat. And the main building here is a modified version of the Twilight Pack entrance building. You walk through this and inside I've created this little Halloween display. So got all the Pape Mache animal statues here and uh, the little Dracula one there. Looking very annoyed because there's a bat on his head. <laughs> Perfect. The flooring is custom made. That's those new floor tiles again. Getting that checkered floor in here and then there's a lot of windows and doors that i've made in this build oh heads up the window and door pieces are all modular and it's all these tiny little fiddly pieces that you put together and you eventually come out with these stone windows and stone doors looks lovely lots of detail bit of a pain in the arse to get together anyway let's make our way through so the path takes us through the archway and that brings you into the main courtyard of the castle. This is a very compact build so it can get a little bit squished through here. To the right I've got down a chief beef which is again comes with the pack's ready-made blueprints. Then next to this I've put in a keeper hut and the aforementioned tower toilets. I'm a big fan of the tower toilets. 
very well made staple piece there. Next to the toilets is the two big main towers of this build. In the first main tower, in here I've housed the wombats. The wombats are much bigger than I was expecting them to be. Much the opposite with the skunks. I just assumed that wombats were the size of koalas, stupidly. But these are huge. Much like the raccoons, they probably won't be very happy with this tiny circular space I've given them. But it's creative mode, so it doesn't matter. Gone for the highly decorative look here with the columns. Both of the main towers in this build. Most of this is my own work. The whole bottom half and middle sections of the towers is stuff that I've built myself. But the two tower toppers, that again is a blueprint with the new pack. This is my favourite, I've got to say. I could not put these in the build. In fact, these two towers are what inspired me to get working on this in the first place. I think whoever designed the blueprints that have come along with the Twilight pack, they did an absolutely awesome job here. The second tower, I've created a custom entrance for this one and the wraparound stairs covering half the building. And I think that worked out really well. I was looking at quite a lot of castle designs, especially like fantasy castles on Pinterest, just to get a basic idea of what those usually look like and if there was anything I could replicate in game. And the one thing I saw a lot was the way towers, they always have stairs wrapping around them and I gave it a go and it worked out all right. Inside this tower is where I'm housing the new bats. Now, the free bat in Planet Zoo is a new first for the game. Walk through exhibits with a bigger footprint. It's still a big box shape, but incredibly customizable, so it doesn't feel like a square box. The entrance through is a nice touch here. You have to pass through this PVC strip curtain and something so little can bring you such joy. It's exactly like the ones that you get in real life. Such a lovely touch there. <laughs> Do you know, it's quite funny actually. I was just sat watching the bats before and one of the guests walked through to the exhibit but she didn't go through all the way and she was just stood there with the curtain over her head, like half open, half closed as if she'd just gone in and gone, oh, creepy, no, I don't want to go through the gross curtain or something. And it, it just made me laugh. So with this one, you walk through the curtain and you're into the box. Or is it? When is a box not a box? All right, concept time. So as usual, when there's a new pack, I just lay all the pieces out and get a good look at them. And when I first took a look at the fruit bat habitat box, first thing I wanted to do with this was to see how far I could push the boundaries of it being, well, box shaped. That's when I knew I had to try creating a circular tower for the bats. And I think it worked out quite well. So here we have Tower of the Bats. That's a Conan reference if you play Conan at all. I've set the whole habitat up in here to try and distract you from thinking of it like a big oblong box. I've created the different levels of foliage in here with the curved shapes. I do think it distracts your eye from the fact it's a box. The bats fly around so quickly, you'd never know that they're not flying further than the confines of the boundaries of the box. And I've got the scenery pieces fitting in around the static exhibit pieces. So it all looks quite natural and like it belongs here. Now, something I guess you are probably wondering. Big elephant in the room that I've not mentioned until now. This is meant to be a Twilight Zoo ride. So why am I touring this place in the daylight? Well, that is a very valid question. Of course, all of this zoo, especially because that's when the animals are active, it's meant to be viewed at early evening time. That's the whole point of the pack. But as soon as you turn the game into twilight or nighttime mode, it does be very funky with the game lighting. That's fair enough. And if you're playing on your own and you don't mind it too much or you just turn up the gamma or something, then yeah, you can get around that. Thing is, this is with me with my YouTube hat on here. If I was to put out a video that was 90% darkness and you can barely see a thing, well, nobody's gonna stick around for this long. That's why I've shown everything in daylight up to now, but you can't do the bat justice by showing them just in daylight. They really don't like it. Every bat habitat I've visited in real life is pretty much pitch black, which certainly adds to the experience when you can feel the air move when they was about your head. And they keep it pitch black in there because the bats are active at night. And if they lit it up with daylight, you'd only ever see a bunch of empty trees and all the bats huddled up in their roosting boxes. So they keep it dark so the bats think it's night. And <laughs> last time I was in the zoo, I asked, 
Well, my other half asked, although I was thinking of asking. What do they do when it turns to actual night? What they do is they gradually turn the lights on at night and keep them on all night so that the bats think it's daytime and they go to bed. Pretty obvious when you think about it, but I thought that was pretty cool. The bats are working night shift in there or something. They don't just leave them in permanent darkness. Anyway, whoops, sorry, I've deviated a bit there, like I do sometimes. Back to the batting game. What I was getting at with all this is you can't do them justice in the daylight, so let's turn the lights out and see what this looks like at night. Okay, so here it is at night. It's not pitch black in here because the game doesn't really allow for that, and I did add a couple of spotlights. Normally in a real zoo, they don't have these, but they tend to have zoo educator staff dotted around and they have these filtered torches with colours like this. I assume because this type of colour doesn't bother the bats and they'll shine them at trees and feeding stations so you can get a look at the bats. So that's what I've gone with here. That is my take on making the bat exhibit box, not a box. The exit here, we're back through the PVC curtains and that brings you out to the back of the castle overlooking the big cliff here. See? Looking at the zoo here, a big difference viewing the zoo at night than in the daytime. Just an aside, I have added spotlights all over the zoo, so anybody that was wanting to view all of this at night, I have got the green spotlights there doing that job. It's just everything in Planet Zoo looks better in the day, so let's go back to the daytime view. There we go, much better to see things with, and we can continue with the tour. Out of the back cave, and if you followed the path around to the left, the building here is a modified version of the entrance. I've turned this into an exhibition space for some spiders. This is pretty much the same setup as I had for the Halloween display around the front of the castle, but this time it's got the exhibit boxes rather than the papier-mâché animals. Out of here, the path then connects back up with the Halloween building, and I've also got a gift shop and a water shop squeezed in here too. Like I mentioned, the whole build, I've squeezed a lot into small footprint deliberately. I wanted it to feel like a very confined enclosed space within the walls of the castle. I will say, the small winding paths isn't great for guest pathing, but it really sets the tone of what I was going for with the build. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tour. I'm sure there's little bits I've missed here or there, but I think you get the gist of it from this. The whole build will be available to download from the Steam Workshop once the Twilight Pack release is on there. I will, of course, leave a link to this in the comments if you want to go and check that out yourself. I do hope you all have lots of fun building your own little castles with the new pack stuff. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.